Okay, y'all. It is September 17th, 2024. And I tried to tell y'all. Everybody tried to tell y'all. Everybody tried to tell y'all. I'm just saying. Let's get into this Diddy situation. I'm definitely going to follow this. Definitely. Let me just be clear. For one, <laughs> y'all, bad boy ran things. When it comes to bad boy on the radio, bad boy videos, bad boy artists, we talking about like 112, Mace, Biggie, um, Faith Evans, Mary J. Blige, Craig Mack, Shine, uh, Carl Thomas, like for real, for real, if you with me, then you, if you know, you know, bad boy music had the clubs jumping, bad boy videos were fire. So for real, for real, for a lot of the older individuals, this right here, this this has us shook. <laughs> and not shook in a way of like, we can't believe it because look, they was trying to told us all back in the day, but it's just like, I feel like Diddy was kind of walking around like he was untouchable, like couldn't nobody touch him. And it's really just like they say, the rooster came across. So let's go on and get into the latest about Diddy's case right now with the feds. Now, the first thing is that he has been denied bail. Yes, he has been denied bail. And so um, he actually gave up his mansion in, um, he gave up his mansion in Miami. And he also gave up his children's uh gave up his children's um passports and uh the judge was like uh-uh ain't gonna happen you're not going nowhere sorry so let's first get into him being denied bail and um let me just switch my screen <sighs> We're going to take this nice and slow, okay? So the latest news is, is that Diddy was denied bail. And so we're going to backtrack a little bit, just so you know. But I think this article probably will take us back a little bit. But this is the thing, okay? You know, first of all, a lot of people are saying, of course, the Cassie lawsuit that he settled in one day is really like the catalyst that really had the feds to say, yeah, we're about to go ahead and we're about to get on him. And of course, I think it was back in March when you saw the raid in Miami and um, was it L.A. where they raided his house, his both of his mansions. Right. Truth be told, and anyone that has followed Diddy or know of Diddy for a while knows that there's always been like this cloud. It just always has been. Um, I actually was thinking back to making the band. And that's something I'll get into later uh, in another video. But Diddy, in my opinion, was um, power is very seductive. You know, you can have money, right? But power, baby, power is seductive. Power will have you doing things two and four people that you never thought you would do power will have you in places um and in in touch with folks that you may have never thought you'd be in touch with power is very seductive so let's get into this article this was on nbc news and it says judge orders sean diddy combs brother love love puffy p diddy uh sent to jail while he awaits sex trafficking trial now, see, first and foremost, I, I immediately compared this to the R. Kelly case. And I want to ask you, did you automatically think about R. Kelly when you saw him first? I think I want to ask you, did you think about R. Kelly when Cassie and her lawsuit came up? Then when other people started filing lawsuits, did you think about R. Kelly? The fact that they are not giving him bail. I was like, oh, this ain't good. Either. Like, we already know it's not good, but I think when we talk about years imprisonment, this is not good. 
Now, he also gave up his mother. Um, I think her name is Janice Combs. He gave up her passport as well. So again, let's get into the lawsuit. Combs, who pleaded not guilty to charges of sex trafficking, racketeering, and transportation to engage in prostitution, was denied bail. Bro. All right. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to let this video play without sound just because I don't want to copyright because we're going to read it below. But I think it's this part where we are seeing them. I think this is one of the matches that they raided. They took some stuff. We'll talk about what they took. This is him during, I think, his arraignment. These are the charges that they're charging him with. I think this is when they arrested him, yeah, um, in New York City. And you know what? I mean, I know this may seem a little crazy. But I'm like, he moved to New York City because he knew that this was pending. That's what his attorney said. I, I just, I, okay, I don't know who those people are. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that alone. All right. So today, September 17, 2024, this was uploaded and then updated at 4.50 p.m. Sean Diddy Combs, a spotlight adored music impresario who helped launch the careers of some of the biggest names in hip hop and R&B, was denied bail and sent to jail Tuesday after being accused in a three count federal indictment of having used his sprawling business empire to abuse, threaten, and traffic women in order to fulfill his sexual desires and protect his reputation. Prosecutors in the Southern District of New York accused Combs of sex trafficking, racketeering, and transportation to engage in, in prostitution in the indictment unsealed Tuesday. So they're saying, look, he was using his businesses to actually like move women and do all of the things, move women, weapons, drugs. I think we'll get into that in this article. It accuses Combs, 54, along with members of his security mm, and household staff, personal assistants, mm, and other associates in his businesses of creating a criminal enterprise whose members and associates engaged in and attempted to engage in, among other crimes, sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. Now, if you're old enough to remember making the band, um, and then Diddy also had like this business show. I think it was uh, kind of like T.I. show where they were looking for the great, the best assistant or something like that. For real, for real, like when you look at the way that Diddy conducted himself, in my opinion, it's one of those situations where you make the, a deal with the, and it's like now you can't get out. Like it's, it's cause, because I almost want to say, like what was his household staff, personal assistants, and other people supposed to do? Because it's almost like if you were there and you experienced it, you you willingly or unwillingly just to keep yourself safe, did it. Then it's like, if you leave, can you leave? Like we saw how he dragged Cassie when she was trying to leave the hotel. You know, when she left the hotel room, that video that went viral, he was dragging that girl. So what do you think he's going to do to somebody who he definitely having? Any kind, I mean... Mm. The indictment centers around Combs' alleged orchestration of elaborate sex parties that he called freak-offs that included the distribution of drugs, the transportation of sex workers across state and international lines, and the use of force and threats against women who were forced to participate. He appeared somber during his arraignment hearing Tuesday in Manhattan, in Manhattan where he pleaded not guilty and was denied bail in front of his three adult sons and other supporters. Two of the charges carry a maximum sentence of life in prison. 
Prosecutors had asked that he remain jailed until trial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In a memo supporting that request, U.S. Attorney, US Attorney Damian Williams said Combs' disposition to violence cannot be reasonably prevented through bail conditions and called the rapper turned mogul a flight risk who poses a significant danger to the community. Y'all, y'all, y'all. And I don't feel sorry for him. I'm just I'm just thinking about how bad, 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 bad boy. You make me feel so oh, you make me feel so good. Oh, you make me feel so and it's just like, why? Why did you ruin it for all of us? Why? For real. Like the memo, which says the government interviewed more than 50 victims and witnesses, describes decades of alleged physical abuse by Combs against women, including some he was romantically involved with, and the alleged kidnapping in 2011 of a person only as identified, identified only as individual one, as reasons he should be detained. And I do agree because I was seeing some comments on another video where people were saying that he called Kalina like 54 times when Don Richard's uh, lawsuit went public. He called Kalina like 54 times. And then, you know, we'll cover that too, where Kalina was like, I ain't seen it. And I don't know what she's talking about. Now, I don't recall what Don is saying. I know Don said we was there together, but I don't recall. So <laughs> we'll review that too. The memo also says the agents recovered three AR-15s, two of which were broken down into parts with the magazines loaded in them in Combs' bedroom closet during a search of his Miami home in March. The serial numbers on the AR-15s were defaced. Williams said. During the hearing, attorney U.S. attorney, during the hearing, assistant U.S. attorney Emily Johnson said Combs' history of substance abuse was also among the reasons he should be failed. She should be jailed until trial. After he was arrested Monday night at a hotel in Manhattan where he was staying, she said law enforcement found a pink powder in his room that is believed to be a narcotic. Combs' attorney has proposed had proposed he be released on a fifty million dollar bond that they say they secured by equity in his $48 million home in Miami. In a letter to Judge Robin Tarnovsky, they said Combs was not a flight risk and that his legal counsel was in possession of his passport, as well as those, as those of his mother and his four daughters. And I'm just trying to understand. Okay, so the the women gave up their passports. Why, did, why don't the sons have to give up their passports? Somebody, let's talk about that in the comment section because I'm trying to understand why didn't um, Justin, his other son, and then I guess he adopted. Um, I know he hates being referred as Albie Shure's son, but um, I guess he adopted Albie's son. I guess that's why I keep including him as a third son. That young man should have went on over there with his daddy, like his daddy told him when they raided those two mansions, you know, in my opinion. Boy, young man, go on over there with your, your biological father. Get up out of this, in my opinion. The indictment demands that Combs forfeit any property and money used to commit the crimes he is accused of, though it doesn't specify any particular assets or amounts. So they also, um, from what I understand, are expecting him to, they're, they're actually saying, look, any property you bought, any assets you obtained, any money that you got from your illegal activities, you need to give that over to us. You need to give that over to the feds. Baby, they about to, baby, he ain't about to have nothing. Williams reflected on Cone's fall from Grace Tuesday. A year ago, Sean Combs stood in Times Square and was handed a key to New York City, he said. Today, he's been indicted and will face justice 
in the Southern District of New York. Outside the courthouse Tuesday morning, Mark Agnifilo, Agnifilo, one of Combs' attorneys, said Combs is innocent and would plead not guilty. He's going to fight this with all of his energy and all of his might and the full confidence of his lawyers. A told reporters, and I expect a long battle with a good result from Mr. Combs. Combs is the highest profile music artist to face sexual misconduct charges since the R&B singer R. Kelly, born Robert Sylvester Kelly, was sentenced in 2022 to more than 30 years in prison for sexually abusing fans, some of them children, racketeering, and sex trafficking. Now they've got the transportation for Diddy. Uh, for Diddy. That was 30. Mm -hmm. How many years do you think this possibly could be for Diddy? Combs who helped boost the careers of some of the biggest names in hip hop and R&B, including the notorious B.I.G., Mary J. Blige and Usher, has seen his star dim since a bombshell lawsuit filed in November by his former longtime girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura. Ventura, an R&B singer known as Cassie, accused him of years of physical and sexual abuse. The two settled the lawsuit in one day without disclosing the terms and with Combs denying any wrongdoing. And you know, um, Cassie's husband, I think his name is Alex Fine. He was a trainer, a personal trainer for Diddy. And I think he, well, I know that he also trained Cassie and he does not like Diddy, like he <laughs> at all, okay? And um, I think, I just feel like that was good for Cassie. You know, um, I'm just glad she got out of that relationship. Um, I'm also glad to, in my opinion, that potentially, and I'm not saying that Mr. Fine saw anything, but it's, it's really good that she has a partner who stuck it out with her because I mean I'm pretty sure the trauma she speaks even still now of the difficulties that she has from the relationship and from the trauma um, and abuse she experienced so I feel like it's so good that Alex was right there with her you know and didn't abandon her didn't question the truth of it or the validity of it I mean that really does make a huge difference when um when there's someone who's coming forth about um, uh, an abuse allegation about domestic violence, uh, DB allegation. Many of the allegations in the indictment closely mirror claims Ventura made in her lawsuit, including that he forced women to have sex with male prostitutes and participate in drug-fueled orgies that Combs called freak-offs. The 14-page indictment called them elaborate and produced sex performances that Combs is alleged to have arranged, directed, aimed during, and often electronically recorded. They occurred regularly, sometimes lasted multiple days, and often involved multiple commercial sex workers. According to the indictment, which says that when federal agents raided Combs' home in Los Angeles and Miami in March, they seized various F off supplies, including narcotics and more than a thousand bottles of baby oil and lubricant. Those are productions. That's production. Oh, baby, that's that's addiction. That's, I get up thinking about it. That's, oh, baby. <laughs> Williams said they also seized electronic devices that contain images and videos of the f offs with multiple victims. Baby, you dumb dumb. The indictment says Combs and his business associates would lure women into his world, often the, under the pretense of a romantic relationship business associates, business associates, business associates. Often under the pretense of a romantic relationship and then use force 
threats and coercion, including drugs to keep them obedient and compli compliant, to compel them to compel their participation in FOFs. No victims are named in the indictment. The sex trafficking count maintain, mentions victim one, which in, with whose interactions with Combs as described in the indictment mirror those described in Ventura's lawsuit. The indictment, for instance, mentions a 2016 assault on Ventura that was captured on a hotel surveillance video and published by CNN in May. Combs admitted to his behavior in the video in an apology after its release. According to the indictment, Combs attempted to bribe a member of the hotel security staff who had intervened. And let's be very clear, he denied that it ever even happened. He denied that any he had done anything to Cassie until that video came out. And then we thought he was over in Bali the way he recorded that apology video. When his authority or reputation was threatened with negative publicity, the indictment alleges, including around late 2023, after Ventura's lawsuit was filed, Combs and members and associates of his enterprise are alleged to have pressured witnesses and victims, including through attempted bribery, to stay silent and not report what they experienced or knew to law enforcement, according to the indictment. See, that's fresh. They don't even have to go back. Like, this is fresh. You sitting up here trying to stop people from saying anything. Ventura's attorney, Douglas Wigner, declined to comment on the indictment. And I don't blame him because, you know what, his 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 um, client got justice, at least monetary justice, right? The things that Diddy did to Cassie can't be undone. And I, I just agree with him. I don't have any comment. We're going to let the judicial system do what it does. At the, news, at the news conference Tuesday, Williams, the U.S. attorney, said Combs had not acted alone and, and indicated it was possible others may still face charges. He said he could not specify how many people are believed to have been victimized by Combs, but stressed that this, invest, that this the investigation is active and encouraged ooh, geez, anyone with information about this case to come forward to do it quickly. Combs has been charged with RICO conspiracy to use his business and employees of that business and other close associates to get his way, William said. Since Ventura's lawsuit, several others have accused Combs in separate lawsuits of sexual assault or sexual misconduct. Combs' attorneys are fighting those suits and have vehemently denied the allegations. Um... What are your thoughts on that? I feel like the feds, the federal, the feds have done a lot of, um, a lot to make sure that they have an ironclad case. That's what I think. Um, I want to go over to, um, let me go to, there were a couple of posts. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna just gonna cover a couple of posts. Um, that were posted on the shade room. I go to the shade room, but you know, I really need to find a new uh, platform, but anyway. Baby, it's some people that are concerned, okay? I'm pretty sure it's some people that are concerned right now, for real. And I let me be real clear. I am not jumping up and down like, ooh, happy. That ain't even it. It's just, you know, when you have people in power like this who have the money, 
the access, the connections, the relationships, they will do a lot of stuff. Um, and, you know, I have my own experience with people in power. So it is very hard. Even if people see it, they won't say nothing. Their allegiance to the to the aggressor is always going to be greater than their allegiance to the victim. Behind closed doors, they'll sit up there and they'll talk to you. But don't mention my name. Don't say my name. And even if they're in a position where they're supposed to be helping you, they won't. So, um, you know, these are some of the reactions to him being arrested. Uh, Diddy been arrested on the same week that Tupac died 28 years ago. Um, look at God showing out. Another black man has suffered at the hands of the injustice of the American judicial system. Um, and then there's others. Let's see. One of the things that uh, people did mention was that Kevin Lyles stepped down from his position. But I'm going to let you hear what Diddy's attorney Ranger, had to say. Uh, at a time agreeable to the U.S. Attorney's Office, and then they, they arrested him last night. Um, I spent I spent the, the evening with him. I was with him until about one o'clock. His spirits are good. He's confident. Um, he is dealing with this head on the way he's dealt with every challenge in his life. And um, he's he's not guilty. He's innocent of these charges. Uh, we know we know what the charges are going to be without seeing the indictment. It's going to be racketeering. It's going to be sex trafficking. It's going to be things along those lines. Uh, this is what we've been expecting since the search is in March. He, um, I mean, he came here. I mean, he, he and he, that's, he's he supposed to, to you know, I'm not going to play it all, but he's supposed to speak up for his client, right? Uh, if he was to do anything else, it would look crazy. So he's supposed to do that. Um, baby, it's, it's going to be a mess. Um, again, they said, you know, they see more of the, I, baby, bo bo I mean, bottles of baby oil. Lord have mercy. Child. That is crazy. Um, you can go and watch the um, attorney, uh, attorney, U.S. attorney speak on that. These are the charges that he's facing that we talked about. And it does give the sentencing, the maximum sentence, which racketeering is life in prison, sex trafficking, Life max is life minimum is 15. Transportation for prostitution, the max is 10 years. Kevin Lyle stepped Sayonara. <laughs> and um Sayonara. it was really, really interesting. A lot of people are saying, Whoa, Kevin Lyle steps down, you know, the day that Diddy, or the day after Diddy gets arrested. I'm trying to find uh, that post. Sayonara. <laughs> Just give me a second here. Okay. So this was from Kevin Lyles. Team, from the start, 300 was centered around the idea. Actually, let me do this. So he stepped down from his role as CEO of 300 Entertainment. Um, and he says he's, he feels like it's time to pass the torch. A lot of people are saying, wait a minute, this is kind of weird. This is weird because, you know, Diddy got arrested last night. Everybody is, of course, saying Cat Williams told us. He tried to told us at the beginning of the year what was about to pop off. So he says from the start, 300 was centered around the idea that when you intensely focus on servicing artists, and the culture, good things happen. When we combine that attention with our fearlessness, creativity, and passion, it unlocks greatness and deliver impact. Next month, we'll be, we'll be celebrating its 300, we'll be celebrating its 10th anniversary of greatness and impact. I wanted to take a moment to express my gratitude to our team and share some news. A decade of influence. Now look, Throughout the past decade, we stayed true to our original vision and values. 
We created the first ever label ecosystem in the industry. We celebrated trap queens. We dripped too hard as a lifestyle, and it was always a hot girl, hot girl summer. I'm like, I don't know who wrote all of this, but I'm not fixing to read that, child. That's like, that take me back to high school or like middle school. Not doing that. Um, at the end of this month, I'll be stepping aside and departing, departing WMG. Although to ensure a successful transition, I'll continue to consult with the team through the end of the year. So people are got they have their opinions. Now there's some stuff I want to do jury duty for. Somebody said um Diddy got 700 baby oil bottles left. P Diddy will be wanting a party. You got to go you got to tell him no. Um so they are the industry crumbling one by one everything finna start coming to light and then somebody said the diddy fallout about to be wild diddy going to jail jump trump, trump second temp um ceo stepping down this too much um so somebody said kevin Lau saw them papers like i right, i'm i'm gonna head out uh y'all trying to correlate diddy and kevin Lau stepping down is crazy uh veteran exec kevin Lyles is out at warner atlantic records is undergoing a significant leadership ho- overhaul this fall the timing of Kevin Lyle stepping down is interesting. Could it be the new leadership at Atlantic? Or should we be asking who are Diddy's mentors? Atlantic Records letting go of its entire staff and roster. The Diddy situation going federal. Kevin Lyle stepping down and Kendrick calling for the party to die. As separate as all these things seem to be, they're all connected. The industry is about to look real different. I don't think Kevin Lyle stepping down was a coincidence. Not Kevin Lyle stepping down from 300 Entertainment. When we say, oop, I knew it then. I knew it. Them artists on his camp ain't making no money. Um, he's He besties with Miss Julie Greenwald. His distribution was his distribution was under Atlantic 2. Oop, former Def Jam operator. Laugh out loud. Julie stepped down at Atlantic. Max stepped down from Warner. Kevin Lyle stepped down from 300. Sayonara. <laughs> Somebody said Kevin. Sayonara. Packed the flight already booked the ball again. Sayonara. I'm telling you. It, Say- so, y'all, okay? Ooh. Then this right here. Diddy accused of contacting Kalina Harper at least 54 times following Don Richard's lawsuit. Um. It was also mentioned that he, con- uh, let's see, Diddy's arraignment in court continues. The assistant United States attorney has claimed that witnesses they interviewed have expressed fear. It was also mentioned that he contacted his former group mate, Kalina Harper, at least 54 times before she shared a statement via social media. As previously reported, her statement came after Don Richards, Don Richards filed a lawsuit against the, against the mogul. Um, uh, we have a mail right now the schedule for tomorrow at 30 in front of Judge Carter, the district judge assigned to this case. Uh, 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 I think that we, 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 and that looks like the latest. All right. And we'll do this last one and then this will be it for now. But you know there's going to be more rolling out. The media surrounds Quincy Brown, Justin Holmes, and Christian Holmes following the Diddy's arraignment. I, look, now that Diddy's arraignment has come to an end and he remained detained, his sons, Q Brown, Dave Holmes, and Christian Holmes have left the courthouse. The media followed all individuals to their vehicles as they left the area. Thank you. Like to share any comment how important was it for you and your brothers and your cousins to be here? And see, this is what I said. Put your baby call your dad and go home. Get away from this nonsense. Keep it strong. Don't snap. Somebody said people acting as if it's clear to post a throw him under the bus. Which of course they're not. And of course they're adults and they're gonna be there for the fathers, of course. 
Um, I think the girls, are, I think, I want to say the girls are still minors. Uh, yeah, they're still minors. But the sons aren't, so maybe, I don't know if that's why. I, I don't know why they were able to do that. Um, and I just think that it's one of those things where I don't, it, it like, I mean, how do y'all feel about that? How do y'all feel about the sons having to be now, you know, chased and followed by media? And, I don't know. This young lady says, uh, everybody keeps saying Quincy should go to his biological daddy. First of all, he grew up with P. Diddy and with his siblings, so why should he jump shit now when they're going through some of the worst situation and situations of their lives? He should be there to support his young sisters and brothers. Y'all crazy for saying silly stuff like that. Um, if you even listen to any of Abby Shores, Hate on the whole Diddy Tim Porter situation. Um, he does not have nice words. What well, do uh, well, actually, he has his truthful words about um, uh, and you know, I did not know this, but you know, uh, Josie. Uh, and he means so much to me. There's nothing more precious. So actually, Al B. Shore wrote that song about Kim Porter because she was pregnant with Pussy. And uh, Jodeci, you know, uh, for Forever My Lady, uh, they performed the song, but Al B. Shore actually wrote that song for Kim Porter. And, you know, I think there's a lot of. Uh, there's a uh, Al side, Kim side, Sean Cone side, and somewhere up in here there's a two. Um, but I just feel like, you know, I think that a lot of people knew how Sean Cone was. I think that may be, in my opinion, a part of why Al felt the way that he did. And so it's like, get out of it. You know, you don't have to be a part of it. it you know, this is not for you to be involved in something. He just wants his son out of the middle of it. I mean, he is his biological father. He knows exactly, you know, what he knows. I mean, he was in the industry. And baby, I'll be sure was I'll be. Baby, I'll be sure was the one, okay? So he was definitely deep in the industry as far as, you know, as far as access and stuff like that. Um, so he knows a lot about Sean Town. And I think that he definitely does not get any joy or pleasure out of seeing his biological son, his son, and him and Quincy do have a relationship. So it's not like he's a, um, you know, he's a, a, a father who is not involved. They do have a relationship, and I'm pretty sure it does hurt um, Al to see his son being in the midst of all of this cameras on him about some stuff that he prays about his son has no involvement. So we are going to continue to follow this because we need to just continue to follow it, okay? And um, there are going to be some other videos that I do. Uh, so you can watch, go and check out the playlist, Welcome to the Room Entertainment. And this will be all, every video following the Diddy case will be under WTTR Entertainment. So this is up to date right now what we got. He has been denied bail and his attorney plans to appeal. All right, guys, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot going on. Lots being said. What do you think about Kevin Lyle stepping down? Uh, what did you do? You what do you think about the the females in the family having to give up their passports and none of the sons? You know, the mom and the daughters have given up their passports. Um, well, actually, I'm not gonna say it out loud, but now I think about it. Oh, okay. Uh, what do you think about Diddy calling Kalina? those many times, you know, trying to get in contact with her after Don Richard filed a loss, her lawsuit. Um, we'll get into Don Richard's lawsuit, lawsuit as well, but um, yeah, just let me know what you guys think. We're going to be following it. We'll see where it takes us. <laughs>
this tangled web is going to be ugly. <laughs> All right, guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you share this video out. Comment below and let's keep the conversation going.